it's blatantly obvious that D4 is at its lowest point ever. Literally rock bottom, if you ask me. You don't have to look any further than the number of players playing the game today. It's almost non-existent. So in this video, I want to talk about the real reason why players are leaving Diablo 4. I think you're going to find it interesting. I hope you'll stick around and join me. We'll see you on the other side. Now, before we get into why I believe players left Diablo 4, we need to set up the scene to what led up to this happening. So... We all know season three was marketed and promoted as the season of the leaderboard slash gauntlet. It was a major talking point in BlizzCon 2023. Actually, the only thing when season three was mentioned in BlizzCon 2023, the only thing they talked about or highlighted, sorry, was the leaderboard gauntlet. Now, season three was going to come to fruition on January 23rd and when we got closer to that date we all learned that the leaderboard gauntlet feature in season three the main theme of season three as it was promoted was not gonna come on January 23rd and what we were told was they they wanted to get it right so they were gonna take their time just fine-tuning it because they wanted to get it right. So it was going to come soon after the launch of season three on January 23rd. Well, January 23rd came, February came, and we weren't getting any information in reference to the leaderboards. And of course, that led to a lot of upset players in Diablo 4 and a lot of discussion around whether it should have been dropped on January 23rd and why it's being delayed and all this kind of discussion. So erosion, basically, and a lot of negativity around the topic. Anyway, fast forward and eventually Leaderboards Gauntlets was announced and dropped on March 5th. Now, January 23rd, Season 3 drops. March 5th, the Leaderboards actually comes live during this misstep in enters 11th hour games and the release of last epoch 1.0 on february 21st so while d4 players who are excited and anxious about trying leaderboards in between this time frame launch of season three, January 23rd, and the launch of leaderboards, which was in March 5th, last epoch drops 1.0 on February 21st. And this is where things kind of derailed for Diablo 4, and I'll explain why. Players found, while players were waiting for the leaderboards to come on March 5th. Players found another option. And that other option was last epoch on February 24th. On February 21st, sorry. Now, not all Diablo 4 players tried it. But I would argue that a lot of Diablo 4 players dipped their toes in the water and tried last epoch. It's not an expensive game. $35. So... A lot of players dipped their toes and tried the game. And I would argue that decision for some of the Diablo 4 players to test the waters with LE, a lot of them did not return and are not returning because they enjoyed playing the game. Diablo 4 players have seen and now experience that there are better options out there. The grass is greener on the other side, dare I say. Also, LE delivers on so many issues that ARPG players look forward to. So let's look into those features. First of all, LE is fun to play. LE is easy enough for a casual player to pick up, yet detail enough 
for a hardcore player to immerse their time into. It addresses the needs of a wide variety of the player base, whether you're casual or hardcore. Ellie made a lot of improvements to its game with the release of 1.0. Let's discuss those. First of all, they improved the graphics of the game. The graphics are a lot crisper prior to what they were with 1.0. They have a campaign that is good as D4s. They have crafting, trading. They have an offline mode. There's five classes, 15 masteries, over 120 skills, which allows players to control, alter, and empower their play style. Don't even get me started on the quality of life features and LE. It provides endless stash tabs, which are not controlled by the developer like Diablo 4. You control how many stash tabs you have and they're easily attainable because the way to get stash tabs in LE is via the in-game currency gold. So you can elect to add more stash chaps simply by just pur purchasing them. The sorting system in the inventory, second to none. There's a search functionality in the stash. Even the crafting materials that you earn while you're out and grinding, one click removes them all from your character's inventory. And dare I say, last epoch, as a loot filter. Yep, right off the start, there's a loot filter in LE, and it's very easy to create one on your own. So it's easy to learn and easy to manage. And lastly, one of the more important features of any good ARPG is the loot. And in LE, the loot shines in spades. Not only in the variety of loot, but how loot itemization works in LE. The itemization is amazing in this game in its own right. But when you couple that with the crafting, you truly get an immersive experience with being able to completely customize your experience. In Last Epoch, loot matters you see players are not going back to d4 because they see the grass is greener with last epoch d4 players now are beginning to see that a game can have all these features that a real arpg should have the items D4 players want in a game can be in a game, no matter how much Activision Blizzard King tells them it's complicated. We need time to get it right. Truth is, it's not that complicated. Now, when leaderboards dropped on March 5th, I have to say, I did call out and say that it was going to be a huge L for Diablo 4. But to my surprise, it was worse than even I predicted. And let me elaborate on that a little bit. You see, when Leaderboards was dropped on March 5th, top content creators didn't play it. Now, not all of them. But a good chunk of the Diablo 4 content creators elected not to try the leaderboard. And also, I have to say the fanfare around the gauntlet, lackluster at best. And fast forward to today, it hasn't gotten any better. All you have to do is look at the numbers. All you have to do is look at the amount of people playing Diablo 4 right now. Heck, if you go online and you check Reddit and you check X and you look at the feedback and the reaction so far to what 
players are experiencing what they think about the leaderboards, it's not a pretty picture. And once again, Activision Blizzard King has had a misstep. Another misstep. And unfortunately for them, since releasing the game back six months ago, seven months ago, however long it's been, they've had more missteps than W's. And this is what's killing the game. So there you have it. The real reason why Diablo 4 players have left in droves or Diablo 4 players are not going back is because they got a taste of the good life with last epoch and they now see that the grass is greener with other games and it's going to be very interesting to see how this develops over time because unfortunately for diablo 4 players who seem to have this knack of holding on to it's coming Season 3 is going to be the fix. Leaderboards is going to be the fix. They're now hoping and clinging on Season 4. Which, let's talk about that for just a brief second. Season 4 is 7 weeks away. And we now know that the PTR is going to be launched prior to Season 4. And as it was promoted and communicated in the campfire chat... On the last campfire chat, sorry. Uh, the PTR is going to be obviously a public testing realm for everything they're going to be introducing in season four. Now that is seven weeks away from the recording of this video. Seven, seven weeks being the date. If they stay true to their timelines of how long a season is and when they drop the next season, it should fall in about seven weeks time. Now, if they're going to do a PTR prior to that, they never elaborated on how much earlier the PTR was going to come. We're going to learn that in due time. But the PTR would have to obviously happen before seven weeks and the launch of season four. So we are literally talking four or five weeks from the PTR having to be dropped if they're going to give a couple of weeks we don't know maybe they might choose to only do a couple of days of testing maybe they might choose to do one week two weeks only time will tell when what it really is going to be but the fact is if they stay true to the timelines of this season we are seven weeks away from season four and i always like to say a good indication of the future is what's done in the past. And if we look at the past track record of Activision Blizzard King with how they've handled Diablo 4, I don't have high hopes for season four. I hope I'm wrong. I want to see Diablo 4 succeed and be a game that it should be. Unfortunately, the current methodology of how this game is managed is far different than how other games are managed and again i've referred to last epoch in this video see the difference another difference one that i haven't highlighted and what makes last epoch successful on top of the items that i've already discussed and highlighted in this video probably the constant theme in all those features of the game compared to Diablo 4 is the fact that the developers, 11th Hour Games, elect to listen to their players and take their feedback and actually use the feedback to mold their game. A stark difference between how Activision Blizzard King manages Diablo 4. See, Activision Blizzard King says they're receptive to feedback. Please give us feedback. We want to hear your thoughts. But when it comes to actual translation into the game, there's no correlation, none at all, at least none that I have seen. That is a huge difference between how the two developers operate, manage, and implement their game. 
And until that changes, I really don't have high hopes for Diablo 4 for season four. And if that happens, if another misstep happens, then, well, I, I'm scared to say what potentially could happen to Diablo 4 in the future. Anyway, I wanted to just explain my thoughts on why the launch of the leaderboards was such a flop. And it wasn't purely just on the fact that the design of the leaderboards is boring, same old, same old, rinse and repeat. It's also, and I would say a major contributor was also the fact that Last Epoch is just delivering on so many fronts. So many fronts that actual ARPG players want in their game. And Last Epoch delivers that. That's why Diablo 4 players have left in droves and are playing that game in droves because it's a fun game to play and has a lot of attributes that a real ARPG game should have. Anyway, that's my thought. Tell me I'm crazy. Tell me I'm out to lunch. I would love to hear your feedback and thoughts. Chime in on the comments in the video. I would really appreciate it. We get into a lot of dialogue and debates on my video. So get in there and let me know what you think. Have you converted? Are you not going to convert? Let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it informative. If you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Also, do me another favor. If you are subscribing or you are a subscriber of my content, please make sure you hit the bell. This way you get notified instantly of when content is dropping from me and I want you to get that content right away. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. And as always, we we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.